Good morning and welcome back to the Breakfast Buzz. We are still highlighting our insect pollinators in honor of Pollinator Week a couple of weeks back. And uh, so today we're going to be covering a special pollinator that doesn't get a lot of press coverage, the fly. So before we go looking for any flies, I would like to highlight a few facts about flies just to impress upon everybody how many of them exist not just our typical house fly but there are a lot of other flies that exist there are 120,000 species worldwide they are generalist foragers which means that they are going to be just kind of visiting flowers going after nectar kind of wherever they can get it so they're not actively gathering pollen the way that bees are and they don't have any nests so they're not spending time like bees and wasps are creating nests for their young uh, and provisioning nests and so a lot of that time they can use sunning themselves just kind of randomly laying eggs wherever they need to lay their eggs so that their larva will have its food choice but then they just kind of hang out on flowers and sun themselves and that's pretty much what they do they sometimes have hairy bodies and so this is something that actually will make them an important pollinator just because they are going to be just by happenstance again picking up pollen on their bodies as they visit flowers. Something else that I want to mention about flies is that they can be misidentified as a wasp or a bee because they often will be biomimics of wasps or bees meaning that they have evolved to essentially disguise themselves as something else a little more dangerous so that they are less palatable to something like a predator. If a predator of a fly has the choice between going after something that looks like it can sting it versus something that can't, it's going to go after the thing that can't most likely. Think about it. Would you like to eat something that can sting you or something that can't sting you as you put it into your mouth? But if you can get up close to them, there are some key differences and ID features that you can look at to distinguish them from a wasp or a bee. So let's walk around and see what kind of flies we can find on the flowers this morning. So this is a flower fly. So something that's really noticeable about flower flies in particular, but that you can look for to ID flies in general is that they have eyes very much front and center, very large eyes on their head. Check out those eyes front and center of the head and you can see the black and yellow markings on its tail end or abdomen and this is biomimicry at its finest. How many of us would look at this fly and think that it was a wasp or a bee? Look at those, you can get a really good view of the eyes, how big they are on the front of the head and typically they're going to have short and stubby antenna as well versus bees and wasps which are going to have the eyes more on the sides of their heads and uh, the antenna will be a little bit longer usually. Something that you'll notice with this bee here hopefully is how much pollen it is carrying on its hind legs because it is out actively foraging for pollen for its young, she is gathering all kinds of pollen on her hind legs there, if you can see that. So that is actually one clue that we can look for when we're trying to distinguish between bees and flies. So this is a wasp taking a very long drink of nectar. And you can see that, you know, it has the striped coloration on its abdomen and if it ever comes out of this flower, you might be able to get a glimpse of its eyes, similar placement on its head to bees, where the eyes will be more towards the sides of the head, and then the antenna also will be more up, uh, up a little bit higher in center of the head. Flies are not only pollinators, many of them, but also are important biocontrol agents Many of them actually are parasites on pest insects and 
The flower fly is one example where the adults will be feeding on nectar, but their young will actually be parasites of things like aphids. So if you're wondering about some ways that you can support these little flies, their needs are very similar to the needs of the other beneficial insects and pollinators that we've talked about so far. Uh, using shallow native flowers in your yard, somewhere between 20 and 30 percent of your yard made up of shallow native flowers blooming throughout the growing season is going to be best. Since a number of flies larvae actually feed on other insects or other insects larvae, it's also useful to have bugs in the yard, which probably, again, won't be much of a problem for many or most of us. They also need a space that is free of poisons and or pesticides, which means that we have to be really careful about when we're applying any sort of pesticides outside of our homes, especially that we are being informed about how it is impacting other insects. And then lastly, they need space, they need a place to reproduce, they need sheltering, and so resisting the urge to tidy up the garden and leaving some leaves behind, leaving some areas that are, you know, not frequently disturbed, you know, not tilling soils, things like that. All of the similar things that we've talked about for the other beneficial insects and pollinators is going to benefit flies. Thank you for joining me on this edition of the Breakfast Buzz Highlighting Flies. I hope you all tune in for our next and last insect pollinator group that I will be highlighting, which is part and parcel to our food web. So all of you take care, tune in next time, and be safe.